أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغور لتبلون في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولتسمعن من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا وإن تصبروا وتتقوا فإن ذلك من عزم الأمور وإذ أخذ الله ميثاق الذين أوتوا الكتاب لتبيننه للناس ولا تكتمونه فنبذوه وراء ظهورهم واشتروا به ثمنا قليلا فبئس ما يشترون لا تحسبن الذين يفرحون بما أتوا ويحبون أن يحمدوا بما لم يفعلوا فلا تحسبنهم بمفازة من العذاب ولهم عذاب أليم ولله ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء قدير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his household and all his companions. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness. Firstly, we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant mercy and forgiveness to the brother who lost his life on the way to this particular function. And I've decided to change the topic of discussion based on what has just happened. Because it is a wake-up call for myself. Every time I leave the home, I tell myself I may not return. And this is in line with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein there are so many ahadith that remind us of the closeness of death. And how he says when you read Salah, you should read your prayers as though it may be the last prayer you will be reading. Salli salata muwadda'in. When you fulfill your prayer, don't read it like a chicken trying to peck little grains from the ground. No. But you should take your time, read your Salah as though this is your last opportunity to obey the instructions of Allah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And then also he says, increase the remembrance of that which destroys all your desires. You know, you have so many desires. We hope and pray that uh, the desires we have are actually within the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you think of death, sometimes it keeps you in check. Death is something that is not a disaster. In fact, it is a gift for a believer because... He goes to the next level that he is supposed to be going to. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, when he speaks about the different stages of creation, 
You know, he speaks about how you are firstly created and thereafter you, the, the form of the human being changes from one to the other. And after that you are born and thereafter you will die. And after death you will be resurrected once again. So this is all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. We are now at a stage where we are alive. What's the next stage? We're going to die. And after that, we will be resurrected. So these are the stages we have to pass. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. Brother, there is something wrong with the sound system here. I'm not too sure exactly what it is, but there is something. And I normally don't, uh, you know, mind saying things out because without speaking, you don't get what you want. It's okay, if you cannot correct it, it will suffice, inshallah. So, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the Qur'an and for giving us the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for giving, for giving us what is required to know where we're going and how to prepare for it. But at the same time, brother, when I started the recitation, the sound was right. In the middle, somebody tampered with it and spoiled it. But it's fine, Shaykh. It's just that it keeps the concentration levels a little bit better. Don't think I'm a disaster. I'm just a blunt person sometimes. Allahu Akbar. Because I firmly believe if you don't say you want something, you won't get it. So why should I carry on for one and a half hours believing someone could have corrected it when really I didn't say anything. Allahu Akbar. Uh, well, we thank Allah that we do have sound. Back where I come from, to be honest with you, at any given time, the lights can go, the sound can go. So you thank Allah. We've been trained without sound. So brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. But at the same time, we need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us reminder after reminder, warning after warning. And He says to us why He created us. Last night I touched on it very slightly, where Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. I have created mankind and jinn kind for a reason and that is that they worship me and they get close to me, they prepare for the day they will meet with me. So my aim in life is to prepare for the day I meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What have I prepared for the day I meet with Allah? Have I associated partners with Allah so I will arrive and tell Him, Ya Allah, I worship you, but I also worship X, Y, and Z, or my money, or a stone, or a stick, or a grave, or a tree? Is that what it was? If that's the case, we lose. We will be presenting this in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So understand, your aim in life is to prepare for the day you are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshipping Him in the best way and doing deeds for His sake and abstaining from deeds for His sake as well. Whatever He has asked you to abstain from, you abstain. That is what will result in a good death. Today the brother was coming to an Islamic talk. He passed away, we ask Allah to grant him the reward and to make it a means of his entry into paradise. Every step he was taking in his heart and mind, I am going to learn something about Islam. I would like to be motivated to get closer to my maker. Some people die on the way to a nightclub. Some die on the way to a casino. When we were entering Bolton, I saw so many cars on the left. And I said, is this the venue? And when I turned around, I said, subhanallah, so many people have arrived. And the brothers told me, this is a casino. <laughs> now this evening... And subhanallah, there will be people who may die in that venue or coming from it or to it, going to it. We need to ask ourselves, would I like to die going to commit adultery or going to, for example, a nightclub or going to a casino, as I said, going to a shisha lounge, for example. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We don't want deaths in that particular way. We would like to die in a condition that Allah is pleased with us because we will be resurrected according to the condition that we were in when we die. Subhanallah. I am sure you have seen the little clips that are floating around on YouTube and elsewhere of people who've passed away in conditions of salah.
mics, your switching panel. Take it out. I thought there was something wrong, Habib. If I did not speak, you would not have caught. That's why I say, you don't open your mouth, you can keep on dreaming. Allah <laughs> You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really has taught us al akhdu bil asbab. You want to achieve something, you need to use whatever is in your capacity that is given by Allah to try and get it. Within halal, inshallah, and inshallah you will achieve. That's a lesson I've learned. And I don't mind stopping in order to correct something rather than going home and saying, you know what, they could have done better. No, it's done. Alhamdulillah. I feel like starting the recitation all over again. Bro. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. I was saying, I'm sure we might have seen or heard of people who've passed away in the condition of sajda. I know of a sheikh who passed away in the haram in Medina Munawwara when I was there in Salatul Fajr on a Friday. First saw behind the Imam, al ula he went to sajda, he did not come back up. Subhanallah. What a day. I know of someone who's passed away in the rawda. I know of people who've passed away in the haram. I know of people who died on the mimbar as an imam and he's come down and dropped dead before the salah between the khutbah and the jama'ah. And I know of people who've passed away in ruku and sujood in other masajid. But the question is, if you do not read your salah, what is the possibility of you dying in that condition? Nil! Because you don't even read your salah. You haven't even given your chance, yourself a chance to die in that condition because you don't even do that. Allahu Akbar. People pass away having got up for Salatul Fajr. Whilst to ourselves, it's too cold. We can't get out. The water's too cold. This is too cold. Wallahi, we are fortunate. There are people in the rural areas of Dagestan and Russia who do not have hot water. They don't even have taps in their homes. They get up for Salatul Fajr and walk for a distance before they make wudu in a river. And then they come back and read their salah in ice cold conditions far worse than Europe. What about them? So where are we? And people die in that condition sometimes. So this is why we say, when you hear of a blessed death, someone died with the Quran in their hand, do you read the Quran that you can at least have the probability, possibility of that? This is what it is. You want to pass away in sajda? Is that your dream so that you can be resurrected in sajda? Which is a very, very high condition. The closest that a person can be to their Rabb is when they are in the condition of sajda. You want to get close to Allah, make sure your sajda is correct. Make sure your salah is correct. But if your salah is not even there, and if you peck the ground like a chicken when you are reading salah, you know, I always say today we have two in one, three in one, you have shampoo, you know, two in one, you have this two in one, you have so many things two in one. People do Samiallahu liman hamida and they're already halfway down to sajda. Two in one. Allahu Akbar. This is what's going on. If that is the case, then wallahi we are paying a disservice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Slow down, calm down. It might be the last time you can actually pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't think for a moment that I cannot go. Wallahi, you can go at any time. And so can I. This could be my last speech. I could leave be in the middle of my speech. And so could you. We've seen people drop. We've seen people die. Allahu Akbar. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Every one of you shall taste death. Al-mawtu babun wa kullun nasi Death is a door that everyone is going to go through. Just prepare for it. There is no ways that you're not going to go through it. You don't need to become depressed about it. You just need to prepare for it because you're definitely going. Some go at an early age, some go later on. Like I've always said, ask those who are 60, 70 years old. They will tell you, I remember my youth as though it was yesterday. I remember things I did in my childhood as though it was yesterday. One flash and I'm already 70 years old. Believe me, you have just another flash before you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another flash. And that flash can be any length, but it will still be a flash. Because no matter how old you are, if you are 30, 40, 50, 20, whatever your age is, the past is just a flash. Think about it now. Everyone can think about it. The past is a flash. Allahu Akbar. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us conscious of this. At any given time, we should be prepared to go. Ask yourself when you are thinking of committing a sin. Allahu Akbar. If I die in this condition, what will happen? I'd like to give you an example. 
And this example has been cited by some of the scholars and it's been repeated by a lot because it's a very, very sad example and it's a true story. They were about a group of youngsters who were hooked on to pornography. And that's the scourge of the age. It's the problem that has overtaken even people sometimes who appear to be religious. And what it does to you, it reduces the value of the opposite sex in your head and mind. And it messes and tempers with your entire system that you do not get a kick out of anything permissible. But you get a kick out of that which is dirty and filthy. Allahu Akbar. So it's something that contaminates your thinking, your eyes, your body, your respect for your spouse and other women or other men if you're a woman. And you, you think everyone else is as dirty as you are, yet you are not. Or they are not, should I say. And it reduces the level of the whole community in your eyes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from it. I've just mentioned the tip of the iceberg. So these youngsters, they had a pay site that they were trying to log on to in order to get some pornographic material. And one of them says, I will do this and I'll pay and I'll forward it to you guys. When the mail comes to me, I'll forward it to all you guys, his friends. So he started. Allah protect us and our offspring. So he started and he had subscribed for the year, paid with his card, everything done. And when the emails used to come, he used to forward them to his friends and they used to get excited, talk about it, all this and that and so on. You know what happened? This man decided that it's very difficult to forward it because my group is becoming big of friends. Everyone's now, you know, looking up to me. Hey, where's your jokes? You haven't sent your, yeah, this material hasn't come through of late. You know, you haven't really sent it to me. So he says, hang on, let me put it on auto forward. So he's got it. As soon as it comes in, it forwards itself to 20 people, 50, whatever his group was. And thereafter, Allah safeguard us. This young man passed away suddenly in a car accident. And all his friends were shocked. His janazah was well attended. Well attended by a lot of his friends. And they were crying and sobbing. They made promises to Allah. We're never going to commit this sin again. And you know what happened? They buried the man. They cried. They went to his house. They said sorry. They did whatever they had to. They did whatever they had to. And when they got back to their houses. And at some stage they opened their emails. And they saw, they saw a fresh email with pornographic material from the same man sent from his grave. How did that happen? It was on auto forward. What's the password? We don't know. And this thing continued coming for the rest of the year. In fact, they tried to contact the those whom they subscribed from and they said, look, we have so many people, we will not be able to do it. You'll have to wait until the subscription is depleted. Is that what you want? People know you for forwarding pornographic material to them and this is happening wholesale. We need to talk about it. Is that your preparation for death? When you come to Allah, you say, Ya Allah, I did not forward hadith, I did not forward Quran, I did not forward the statements of the scholars, but I forwarded pornographic material and the dirtiest of jokes and that is me. Here is your presentation to Allah. You gave me life and I used it in order to do all this. Is that preparation? Is that what you want? Allahu Akbar. Highlight of your life. It's going to be yours on the day of Qiyamah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa lantanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. Wa attaqu Allah. Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'maloon. Oh you who believe. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each one of you should look into what you have prepared to present tomorrow. What have you prepared or to forward tomorrow? What have you prepared in terms of your deeds? In terms of what you are going to be putting forth? Allahu Akbar. Be conscious of your maker. Indeed, Allah is all knowing of what you do. He knows of what you do. Subhanallah. So prepare yourself. We need to prepare a presentation such that when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, Ya Allah, for your sake, I gave up adultery. For your sake, I gave up gambling. For your sake, I refused to go to the shisha lounges. For your sake, do you know that an hour of shisha smoking is worse than 40 packets of cigarettes? And when the packs of cigarettes tell you smoking kills, subhanallah, then shisha murders. Wallahi, it does. If smoking just kills you, the shisha murders you. It is suicide. That's what it is. You're killing yourself. You don't realize it. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard our children. Wallahi, we have become so easy going. We look at things, wow, cool dude, cool place, let's go, subhanallah. Our women, mashallah, well dressed, and you find them, you know how I'm holding this microphone? They're holding the shisha. <laughs> Blowing it out of the other side, subhanallah. Allah protect us, Allah safeguard us. Wallahi, it's terrible. You'd rather hold a microphone to give people a good word than to hold a shisha. To Kill the gift that Allah has given you. Are you waiting for lung cancer before you give up your smoking? Are you waiting for your health to completely deplete before you give up that bad habit? Well, if that's the case, Allah can do that to you if He loves you because He wants you to give it up, but you'd rather give it up when you're healthy. We say to people that, you know what? If you give up that for the sake of Allah, whilst you're healthy, it is far more valuable than when you're forced to give it up because your health is taken away. Although that is still a gift of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why, let's turn to Allah. Let's all promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will present a good deed. Allahu Akbar. Has the time not come for those who believe, for their hearts to tremble in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for their hearts to soften up towards revelation that Allah has sent down. Has the time not come? What are you waiting for? My brother, my sister, what are you waiting for to stop all your sin? What are you waiting for to start reading your salah? What are you waiting for to start obeying the instruction of Allah? Are you waiting for a day when your spouse dies or you are injured or you suffer a great loss or you, something happens to your child or for example there is a disaster nearby Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Is that what you're waiting for? Are you waiting for the angels to come down? Are you waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you waiting for your maker? To come and talk to you? Well, he has spoken to you through the Qur'an. What is it that you're waiting for? We should realize and understand. People have come to us. We have been reminded. Every reminder that gets to our ears was not meant to miss our ears. It's come to my ears and yours. As a reminder, Allah is going to ask us. I sent to you reminders tailor-made for you, your ears. I put it in your heart to go and attend, for example. I put it in your heart to go to attend and at the same time you went. What did you come back with? Did you just say it was a good talk? Did you just say it was a good talk? Or did you really benefit from it? Did you come out a changed person? Did you promise Allah? Ya Allah, the scarf I've got on my head today, I'm talking about the sisters, it's not going to be coming off. Subhanallah. A few days ago we had the World Hijab Day. I don't know if you've been following it. First of Feb, where the non-Muslims were donning the hijab in support of the hijab across the globe that is a sign of the Muslim woman and in support of their freedom to do that. So the non-Muslims were donning the hijab in support of this. From amongst them, some accepted Islam. They felt the purity of it. They felt the purity of it. And they said, wow, subhanallah. Allah has guided people just through a piece of cloth towards the deen, subhanallah. And with us, we are given a gift of it. And we want to abandon it, discard it, perhaps look down upon it, perhaps consider it something negative. And Allah says in the Quran very, very clearly, if you are going to turn away, if you are going to turn away, we will replace you with others who will not be like you. We will replace you with someone else. I come from Africa. When we go into the rural areas and we see the poorest of the poor, of the Africans, dressing in hijab, and I tell myself, subhanallah, I'm sure these people are replacing someone in the Western world who's just discarded it. Or in the Arab world who has taken it out. And I always tell the sisters in Arabia that if you have removed your hijab, for whatever reason, you should know Allah replaced you with 10 in Africa. 
Allah does not need you or me. There are so many others. And this is why in the Quran, in many places, He tells us, if you think that you are not going to obey our instructions, we will bring others who will obey the instructions. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu man yartadda minkum an deeni fasawfa yaati allahu bi qawmi yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna Allahu Akbar Whoever from amongst you is going to turn away from the deed, Allah says He will bring forth He will bring forth a people who, whom He will love and they will love Him They will adopt the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala La ilaha illallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. So what is it that you have prepared for tomorrow? And what is it that you are waiting for? How long are you going to continue committing the sin that you are committing, my brother? How long are you going to continue committing the sin you are committing, my sister? How many more speeches do you want? Who would you like to talk to you? Say a name. We'll bring him up. I'm sure he has a message. At least online. Today we are so fortunate. The globe has become a little village. You say, who inspires you? You can Google their name and listen to their speech. That's how small it's become. But once you listen to it, remember Allah is going to ask you, I created facility for you that in your pocket, I gave you an apparatus whereby you could listen to any motivation from across the globe. You were listening to it regularly, but you did nothing about it. The only thing you said is, wow, powerful speaker and good speech. Is that where it stopped? So we're going to go away today saying, subhanallah, powerful talk, you know, and it was a good speech. But we haven't changed one inch. Tomorrow morning, Salatul Fajr, we are snoring. Yet, sunrise is so late, subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. And we pray that Allah can really motivate us to do something. Perhaps on our way home, we might hear news of someone else having gone into the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we always say, death, when we speak about it, it's not dooming people. No, not at all. I'm speaking about it today from a totally different angle to say, just prepare for it. That's what we say. Prepare for the day because when you have prepared something, then inshallah Allah will look at that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking for any excuse to grant you paradise. And myself as well. We really need that paradise so desperately. And the way to achieve it is to try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here we have a brother, really. My heart has softened up. Hearing that news and information of someone coming to our function here this evening who's passed away, a young lad. Subhanallah, Allah grant him Jannah. And Allah grant us all Jannah. My brothers and sisters, it's about time we turn to Allah. Start learning the Quran. Many of us are guilty and we repeat this every time. Many of us are guilty of being Muslimin. We study stacks and stacks of books in order to have a qualification of this world, but we have not yet studied the Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't even know what He says. We have no clue, no idea. Perhaps we might be able to recite it, but we don't even know what it means. And that's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Like we say, we know the life or the lives of so many people around us, but we don't know the lives of the Sahaba or the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, grant us ease and goodness. My brothers and sisters, we are living in an age of fasad. Fasad, chaos, corruption around us. The environment is not extremely friendly. It is quite hostile in the sense that there are a lot of dirty things happening. People are engrossed and engaged in so much in terms of sin, adultery, hooked on to that which is bad, you know, gambling off their monies, throwing it out, oppressing their family members, oppressing one another, making life tough for one another, not realizing that this is not how we are going to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill your duty unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill it thoroughly and correctly subhanallah. Try your best. Wherever you have faltered, turn back to Allah quickly. That's a sign of a mu'min. It's a sign of a mu'min. When you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately and quickly, 
it really is a sign of a believer. Brother, you won't make a difference. You can leave it. It's okay. I'm used to it. I'll repeat the statement whenever it comes. As you notice. As you notice. <laughs> so we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us here this evening. And we really, I will not keep you waiting much longer, the brothers and sisters who are perhaps standing at the back there. And I am overwhelmed myself to see such numbers here. At the same time, the message I have is a message to say, follow what Allah has sent down and follow the path of the Messenger وسلم, as strictly as you can and as best as you can. And at the same time, that will help you prepare, inshallah, for the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell yourself, what is it that I have prepared? You know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will be waiting for us on what is known as the hawl, the pond. And he will be recognizing us. The question I have is if he were, if he were, if he were, to see me right now, would he recognize me as a member of his ummah? That's a question. Would he recognize you as a member of his ummah? That's a question. You can answer that. And the answer of that, subhanAllah, will help you change your life. This is what it is. Don't we believe that Afdalul Khalqi wa Akram al Rusul? You know, he is the highest, the best of, the most honored. He is the one whose intercession we beg from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say that. We love him. We are so fortunate to be from his ummah. We say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah blesses us ten times in return. And yet, we sometimes could not be bothered about what he came with in terms of the message. We couldn't be bothered. And if a girl from down the street were to tell you something, you would jump. It's a fact. Sometimes as old as people get, they've got their little closets which don't have skeletons anymore. They've got fresh bodies. I always tell people a skeleton is at least it's dead, it's gone, you know, it's just there, which means it's a mark that was left behind. But we've got fresh bodies hiding in the closet in reality. Allah Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. We can do away with all that. Remember, sin brings about a lot of stress. If you are depressed, if you are sad, if you have a lot of tension, quit your sins, turn to Allah, start reading the Quran. <laughs> Indeed, the calmness of the heart is achieved through the words of the Quran. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala primarily refers to the Quran. That afdalu dhikri, the best of all dhikr is the Quran. It is a reminder. So if you were to read the Quran, it's tilawa and try and understand it. It will calm and soothe your heart and your mind. Subhanallah. But the difficulty is, when we engage in sin, it tightens our shoulders. It makes us stress. We worried about who's going to see my mobile phone. If that's the case, you're doing something wrong. We worried about who's watching my back. If that's the case, you're doing something wrong. Why worry about this and that when subhanallah, Allah has made things so easy for you. He laid rules and regulations. And He says, you follow this path, you won't have to stress. You'll be happy, content. Concentrate on your wife, your, your husband for example, your, your children, your family members. Concentrate on them. Work on them. Make them happy. At least you will die being known as a man who tried his best to be the best father, the best husband or a woman who was the best wife, the best mother and so on. Rather than people saying, Whew, this guy should have died 10 years ago. At least by now I could have had three children from the other guy. This is the attitude of the people today. This is what's going on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Why? Because each one is living a life beyond what he is supposed to be living in terms of sin. You are supposed to be doing this. Allah blessed you with such a good situation in your home, but you're not happy because you cannot see it because your eyes are fixed on sin. Is that how we're going to prepare for death? So this is why it is described as khasirat dunya wal akhirah. One who has lost the dunya because there they were not happy and they've lost the akhirah because whatever they did in the dunya was not good enough. Allahu Akbar. And now that we've spoken about this, it's very important for us to touch on the beauty of the issue of forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. No matter what you've done, 
You're not useless. No matter what has happened in the past, it can be wiped out within a split moment of a genuine and sincere turning to Allah. Repentance. Oh Allah, what I've done is wrong. Forgive me. I will not do it again. I admit it and I regret it. Wiped out. Completely gone. One who repents from sin is equivalent to the one who's got no sin. Nothing. If you read the Quran, let me read for you two verses. One, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ Allah is promising paradise to those who have repented from immorality, adultery and that which was unacceptable socially. Allah says those who have committed fahisha, fahisha is immorality. Sexual misbehavior is also included in the term fahisha. Those who have involved in fahisha and who have oppressed themselves by committing sin in any way, if they are, if they remind, are remembered or remind themselves of Allah, or they are reminded of Allah, they remember Allah and immediately turn to Him and say, Ya Allah, what we just did was wrong, we don't want to repeat it and we engage in tawbah. Allah says, for those type of people, we will forgive them and we will grant them places in paradise that will be reserved for them. So this is giving good hope to those who might have had a past. Allah says, not only the skeletons in your closet, the whole closet will disappear. Where's your closet? I don't have one. I've got a clean slate. Subhanallah. Why? I engaged in tawbah. I asked Allah's forgiveness. The Quran says those who committed immorality, we still have a space for them in paradise on condition that they turn to us. Just turn to Allah. Imagine if you've got a debt of a million pounds to pay someone and you're struggling in life because subhanallah, you don't know how you're going to pay that back. And suddenly, the man comes to you and says, Do you know the million pounds? He says, yes. Just say, I'm sorry, and I'll forgive you. If you're too arrogant, you say, no ways. Why must I say, I'm sorry to you? I'm not sorry. Well, then pay. <laughs> then pay. But if you put your tail between your legs and say, I'm sorry. I really, I'm very sorry. He says, right, no longer. You don't have to pay the million anymore. I am sorry. Will delete one million pounds. Wallahi, if you tell that to Allah, it will delete that which is more than a million pounds. Because the Quran says those who will be thrown into hellfire, if they had the entire world full of material items and they were to seek that as recompense in order to be let loose from, from Jahannam, it will not be accepted from them, even if it was double. Allah says it won't be accepted from them. So what's that? That's like billions and trillions and zillions and whatever else. Subhanallah. Quadrillions and pentillions. I think you know where I got that from, don't you? Coming from Zimbabwe, mashallah, we went through all the figures in our currency. Up to when we got to decillion. We've actually got to nonillions. Do you know that's a figure? Go and check it. Someone invited me from Nanitans. And I thought to myself, wow, is that connected to nonillion by any chance? I don't think so. <laughs> Amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, no matter what you've done, say I am sorry properly. How do you do it? You've just got four little conditions. Admit your fault. Regret. Ask Allah's forgiveness and promise not to do it again. Wiped out completely. Gone. Deleted thrown out, forgotten, nobody will ever raise it again. You won't be embarrassed by it. Never. So that was one verse I read. Listen to the other verse of the mercy of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of zina. He speaks of adultery. And He speaks of various other sins. And immediately after that He says, those people will be punished. They will taste a punishment. And the punishment of Allah is connected to this world as well as the next. So don't think you get away with it. There's only one way of getting away. And that is, turn to Allah, repent. Say, Ya Allah, what we did was wrong. You know, sometimes we have our weddings. 
And a wedding, if you think about it carefully, it's a sacred union. It is such a sacred union that subhanallah, we should never be disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the functions connected to our weddings. But that's exactly where we disobey Him. So later on, your children don't listen to you, nothing happens, everything's moving. Well, sister, can I ask you, my brother, when you got married, how was the function? Well, there were naked women, there was music, everyone was there, things were happening, we enjoyed ourselves. Well, you're now tasting the result of that. So they look at me and they say, what? You're trying to tell me the suffering I have, my children 16 years down the line, is because of how I got married? You say, have you ever sought forgiveness from Allah for what you did on that day when you promoted vice and sin and you allowed young girls to come semi-dressed or not dressed at all and when you allowed this and that to happen if you have not engaged in tawbah then yes you're paying for it because Allah says you will pay you don't get away with things you do a little droplet mustard seeds weight worth of goodness you see it Mustard seeds weight worth of bad, you will see it. But there is a way of deleting it, tawbah. But I did not engage in tawbah because to me it was the norm. Allahu Akbar. So recognize that what you're doing is wrong. You know we speak about shisha clubs for example. And people look at you and they say, what's wrong with that? Everybody's doing it. Well if that's the case, hang on. Time will come when you pay. Payment time. But if you believe what I'm doing is wrong, it will give you the opportunity to engage in tawbah. If you repent, you, then what payment is there? Allah says, immediately after making mention of adultery and various other sins of immorality and so on, He says, they will be punished illa. Illa is an exception. Istifna. Allah is making an exception. He says, illa, illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan salihan fa'ulaika yubaddilu Allah فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Those who repent and do good deeds thereafter, Allah says, we will convert the bad they did into good on the right side of the scale. And we will then grant them obviously paradise. That's as a result towards the end of the verses. Allah says He has prepared a special hurfa, special place in paradise for such people. Who repented and did good deeds after that. Yubaddilullah. Imagine, Allah says He converts the bad into good. It's like saying, you owed me a million. Say, I am sorry and I will give you another million. Imagine. That's what it is. So where are we? What are we doing? Are we prepared to quit for the sake of Allah? No, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. There's so many examples we have around us that wallahi it is shocking. But my brothers and sisters never despair. Just engage in istighfar. Good news. The Prophet says good news to he on whose page a lot of repentance is found. You have your pages, I have mine. Everything is written. If on my page or yours much repentance is found, good news to you. You think Allah is going to punish you when every day you sincerely repented a hundred times, one hundred times a day, you say, Allah forgive me. You are conscious of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. My brothers and sisters, I have spoken enough. And inshallah, I hope and pray that I am motivated by what I've said. And I hope and pray that we can all be motivated to fulfill our salah, to dress appropriately, to clean our hearts to clean our acts of worship. They should be solely for the pleasure of Allah and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to quit that which is unacceptable in Islam. It is important that we know this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us a sign of fulfilling the respect of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to acknowledge that he was the one who was sent to teach us how to worship Allah. So I cannot come up with an act of worship that he did not teach because it's an insult to him because it's as though I am saying, you came, you taught us, but you didn't teach us everything. There's something that I know that's still much better, which you forgot. Astaghfirullah. That's an insult. He's, the Quran reveals, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Your day, your, this day we have perfected your deen. So don't add into that deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us not to insult Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, to insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us respect ourselves. Read your salah so at least you have a chance of perhaps meeting Allah in the condition of salah. Fulfill your recitation of the Quran. Inshallah, you may die whilst reading the Quran and have hope with the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He help us quit our sins and, and may He make us from those who are motivated. Remember, a one hour lecture cannot really do much more than motivation. But if you get hold of it within 48 hours, if you do something about it, it will last. But studies have shown that if you are motivated and within 48 hours you have not done something about it, perhaps it will just go back as a piece in memory which nothing happened about. So let's act immediately. Change your life. Start frequenting the masjid. Start developing a link with those who teach the deen. Learn. Put into practice. Make an effort. Do things. Inshallah, Allah will save you and engage in lots of tawbah. Don't lose hope. You've made mistakes in the past. You've had all, you know... Deeds you've done, you're not proud of. Perhaps we spoke about weddings that might have happened in the wrong way. Now when they happen in your family, subhanallah, try and make sure they happen correctly. Because it is such an act of worship. It is so blessed. It's a sacred union. Sacred union through which generations are going to flow in the obedience of Allah. How can you have a function that is in the disobedience of Allah for such a sacred union? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us help one another to, to worship Allah. Sometimes your own family puts pressure on you because you want to put on a scarf on your head. Sometimes you find your own relatives want to tell you, how can you have a function that is separated? Come on! We're living here in the, in the first world. Subhanallah. We're going to be living in the first grave as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka abana bin Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahu wa bihamdihi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.